he was a baby that exuded so much happiness and joy. Um, he was so easy. It was, it, it was, he was just wonderful. And can you take me back to the day? I know you were on the ship when you got the news from Ty Ray that he had disappeared. Tell me what was going through your mind that day. Tell me what was going through your heart. What happened? Um, it was, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, I didn't want to believe it. I thought it was, I, <clears throat> I don't think any, I wouldn't wish that on any parent, uh, any person to, to not know where your child is or to hear it over the phone, first of all, while you're in the middle of nowhere and unable to, to, to get there immediately. So it was one of the most stressful uh, and heart-wrenching things I had to go through in my life. And I bet you still remember it just like it was yesterday, even though it's been, what, 18 years? Yes. Uh, it's really hard for me to talk about um, even that day, it, it brings on a lot of like my, my heart is pounding and um, it's hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> totally fine. Totally fine. So you come back. I mean, the, the search begins for him. And I mean, I've obviously read quite a few stories and covered the trial and everything like that. So I know all the facts about you know, what happened in the case, as far as we know. But when you came back and you were looking for him, I mean, were you holding out hope at that point? You thought for sure he was going to be found? Or what was going through your mind at that point? I, I thought that, you know, he was going to be found. Um, and for a long time, even after that, but even that night, I was, you know, so worried that it, <clears throat> I remember you know, I had a jacket on and it was very chilly that night. Um, and I'm talking to the detective and I'm like, it's cold. He doesn't have a jacket on because, you know, they told me what he was wearing that day. And they described to me and I'm thinking, okay, in the morning they'll find him. Like maybe he just, you know, went over somewhere and it's just, you know, hiding or someone has him because he was walking around the park by himself. Because we lived in a, a pretty good neighborhood, you know? Um, I never expected uh, to, to not hold him again. So um, fast forwarding a little bit, you believed Tyree's story the whole time. Did you, back then at least, you believed what he told you that he, turned his back, and the next thing you knew, Johnny was gone. Yeah. Did you ever have doubt at that point, though? Like, in your mind, were you thinking, this just doesn't add up, or did you just truly believe him? I truly believe him. This was my husband. This was the, the man that I decided to marry. I had no, no reason not to believe him. I mean, he loved Jai, you know? Um, and what he told me, I there was nothing in, at that point, there was nothing wrong with what he did as a parent. Had you ever seen him hurt Jahi? Had you ever seen him yell or strike him or be abusive toward him at all? No. Um, so after that, obviously things changed because you testified against him. And what was it that caused you to change your mind about his story? It was everything that the police had, uh, all of the evidence that the police had shown me at that point, which I wasn't, I didn't have any of that information before. The only, re the only thing that I had was my ex-husband's story and <clears throat> the police saying that your husband did this, but nothing definitive behind why you're saying that, that he's, he had done this. And was there a particular piece of evidence that really made you think like, oh my gosh, like this whole time, I had no idea that his story might not be true. What, was there a piece of evidence? Was it the blood droplets? Was it, what, was there anything particular? There were two things in particular. It was the, the diary, um, the journal, 
and uh, the issues with the, the bank statements and him being seen at the, the store without my son multiple times or being seen multiple times and also a statement about my son being in daycare and that wasn't true. So when that light switch suddenly went on, what were you thinking? Like, did it just hit you like a ton of bricks or what, what were you thinking when you were like, oh my God, what if this story's fake? I think that for a long time, it was me fighting with myself that I was with this man, that I brought this man in my life and that my son could, like, would be here if I hadn't married him. Or, so it, over the years has been, you know, really hard for me <laughs> to, to not blame myself. And like, at the end of the day, this is, it's his fault. He, he is responsible for my, for my son not being here. But as a parent, like, you, uh, you know, I put it in motion. I, 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 I chose him. He was my, per I, I chose him as my person. Do you still talk to Tyre? No. When is the last time you spoke to him? I think it was that uh, phone call. Um, it was a, a couple of times after the, the phone call um, that the police had to do. And every time, I mean, the communication you had with him, he was always evasive. He didn't want to answer questions. So you just stopped bringing it up. I mean, what was that like as a mom to be able to, to try to ask him questions, to think like there's, he could have something to do with my son's death and he doesn't want to answer anything. It was really hard. And it was harder during the, after finding out all of this information, having to like probe, try to get him to, to, to tell me what happened. Um, and prior to that, like when we were on talking terms, trying to have that conversation, which is already hard for me, um, and like hitting a brick wall every time is even harder. So what went through your mind the day that he, the charges were dismissed and he was just let go? I broke down. I, had, I didn't, like, when this all first started, I was adamant, I need closure. You know, I need to know what happened to my son. Um, <clears throat> I just couldn't believe it. I, and I know it, the case that was put forth, it was, there's a lot of evidence, but there wasn't, a, a, like, a smoking gun or, you know, this is, it, my son's body wasn't, has never been found, you know? Um, I knew it was gonna be hard, but it was still harder for me to not understand how people can't see all of these pieces that led up to this, all of these lies that he has told over the years. Why can't you see that? Do you think you'll ever know what happened to Jahi? I don't think, <clears throat> I think that unless he comes forth and, and says what actually happened, um, unless there's somebody out there who's seen something or, you know, he's told something to come forward, I'm always going to, to hope that I know what happened to my son. Um, and I'm going to continue to, to, to search for answers. I don't, until the day I die. Do you have any hope at all that Jahi could still be alive? I would be lying if I said that I didn't. I want my son to walk through the door one day. Everything that I've done in my life is to prepare for him to, to come home. And it was really hard to, to wrap my around, mind around the fact that maybe he would never come home. Like I built a, a whole barrier and a block to say, you know, I'm doing everything that I can to be emotionally, financially, 
I'm physically prepared for him to come home. I did everything that I've done. What do you think that he would be like today if, if you saw him again? Oh my gosh, he would be so handsome. <laughs> um, he was an adorable, just like cute baby. I think that um, <clears throat> he would be, you know, blazing a trail in this, uh, uh, blazing his own trail in this world, making a name for himself, being, you know, the awesome personality that he was for the world, for me. For the world. And can you talk about, you know, to parents out there who obviously this is their worst nightmare too, to not ever know what happened to their child. I mean, you talk about what that's like as a mom. I mean, it's one thing to have your child disappear and pass away, but it's another just to have him disappear and really not know. I think that that's the worst thing. Um, it's not knowing. I, you know, <clears throat> Parents who have their, uh, losing a child is, is, I mean, detrimentally hard, period. It is gut-wrenchingly hard. There's no emotions, that, uh, no words that can describe an emotion that a parent goes through, but losing your child and not having any closure is, is probably the hardest thing because you're expected to, at some point, pick up the pieces and, and keep going, right? Um, how can you do that? How can you continue to go on and you don't know what happened? Do you just fall apart and give up? Or do you continue to, to, to try to, to maintain sanity? And that's, that's the biggest thing is trying to maintain sanity. Every day is a process for me. Every day I have to, to, to make sure that I'm saying to myself, I have to get up, I have to do this. Do you have any idea or any theories on what you think happened to Jahi? <clears throat> I think that whatever happened that day, maybe it wasn't, you know, I don't think it was on purpose, but I want to know what happened to my son. Um, what do you think that you um, miss about your son the most? I miss not being able to see what kind of person that he would be, you know? Um, it's been so long and my son was only two. He, I didn't, I didn't get to experience any of his life. You know, he was brand new into this world. And two years is not a long time. Two years is, in, especially the, the kind of baby that he was, I missed him touching my face. I miss him just smiling and just being happy not being able to live his life out. If you could tell something to Ty Ray today, what do you think you would tell him? I don't think I have any words for him. I'm sorry. Like everything that, that, that I could say to him, it's, it doesn't matter. But whatever, you know, <clears throat> I just need to know what happened to my son. Is there anything I'm not asking you that you want to say or add? Is there anything that you think the public should know or that parents in general should know? Is there anything else you want me to know? I, I think that at the, I really want, and I know San Diego has never stopped. Like that's the one thing that I love about San Diego is that they never forgot my baby. Um, I want to remind people to don't, don't forget, don't forget him, don't forget us to, to keep, you know, keep hope up, if you know something or contact the police, we're still ready to fight. Right? 